Hi, my name is Rob Lindberg. I'm the product manager for CA Directory, and I'd like to welcome you to this demonstration of how easy it is to set up the bi-directional synchronization between CA Directory and Oracle Directory Server Enterprise Edition. There are a few prerequisites that I've already completed. I have a running Oracle DSCE Directory instance. I created a replication user account in that instance for CA Directory to use with the appropriate permissions. I have enabled the Oracle change log I have exported the Oracle Directory data, and I have an installation of CA Directory with an environment created. Now let's begin. The first thing we want to do is extract the schema from the Oracle Directory instance and put it in the CA Directory schema folder. We do this by using the DX schema LDIF command and sending it to the LDIF to DXC conversion utility to create the schema in the appropriate CA directory format. We next want to convert Oracle's global password policies into the CA directory format. They are stored in the config directory of the directory instance. We do this using the DX migrate command and separate out them from the DSC LDIF file into a file that we'll then use when we construct the DSA. The last step is to filter the exported data and strip out any content from the LDIF from Oracle that CA directory does not understand. This is done using a mapping file, which lists those attributes which CA directory does not use. The command is again DX migrate, processing the original Oracle file and the, using the mapping file to produce another output with those attributes removed. Now that we have the schema, password policy, and the filtered data file, we are ready to create the DSA inside of our CA directory environment. Using the directory information tree view, I'll click on create a DSA to begin the process. I will select the DX agent where CA directory is installed. I will provide a name and I will use the same prefix that was part of the Oracle directory. We don't need multi-write with disk recovery, so I'm going to clear that flag. We're going to require a password as the minimum authentication level. And we're going to select ignore name bindings since Oracle doesn't have a strict enforcement of the name binding rules. Here we're going to clear the anonymous authentication level and we're going to set allow check password to the trust flags. This is required to allow users to bind to the CA directory and be authenticated. I'm going to enable password policies and I'm going to paste in the extracted password policy data that we retrieved earlier. And most importantly, I'm going to select the Oracle schema that we extracted and also apply the DX server schema, which is required for every DX server instance. I'm going to upload the filtered LDIF file that we created from the Oracle data and I'll create the DSA. Once the DSA has been created, we can start it, and then we can confirm the contents 
were uploaded correctly from the Oracle data file. To verify that we correctly uploaded the original Oracle data, we'll use JExplorer to connect to the CA directory instance and view the contents. We're connecting using our CA directory user, and we can see that all of the data from the original Oracle instance are connected. The next step is to synchronize the two directories and allow for data replication. Creating the configuration to allow the synchronization begins with adding an unmanaged DSA to our environment. In the topology view, I will select create an unmanaged DSA of type dxlink, which will be used to represent the Oracle instance. I'll give it a name. I have a give it a DSA name. We'll use the same prefix that we configured originally for CA directory and which represents the data instance. I'll use my replication user that I created for Oracle. And because we don't want the password stored in a configuration file in clear text, we've used the DX password command to encode the password in the CA dir format. CA directory also uses attributes that Oracle doesn't recognize, so we need to ignore those attributes during replication. We'll clear anonymous authentication. We'll add multi-write to the DSA flag so that we can ensure that we're can replicating data between the two. And we'll add an interface which represents the Oracle instance, which is running on port 10,000 and running on the same server as C directory. The final step is to add knowledge of the unmanaged DSA we just created to CA directory and configure pull replication. We do that by modifying the DSA we created for CA directory to add this information. We first add the Oracle DSA to the knowledge group, connecting the two, and then we enable pull replication. We select the source as the Oracle DSA. And because we're replicating now and pulling data from Oracle, we need to add the same attributes that we ignored when we processed the export file. Once that is complete, you can see the connection in the topology view, and we're ready to verify that data is replicating and synchronized between both directories. To confirm that the setup is working correctly, we will be using JExplorer to create an entry in each directory and then show that it's been synchronized between the two. We'll first connect to the CA directory instance and create an entry there. We'll do that by creating a new person entry. We'll call it a CA, CA dir user and provide the necessary attributes. And save that. And we can see that here in the list. So then we'll connect over to the Oracle instance and show that that entry has been replicated over to the Oracle instance. And then we'll go the other way and just create a new entry here an Oracle user providing those attributes and you can see that user has been added to the Oracle directory and if we connect back to C directory we'll see that that record is now available as well on the C directory side so that short demonstration 
is able to confirm that our configuration has been set up correctly and both directories are communicating to each other. This concludes the CA directory Oracle DSEE bidirectional synchronization setup. For more information, please visit ca.com slash ca directory. Thank you.